Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Please silence your cell phones as we prepare for the Mass. Today we celebrate the Most Holy Trinity. Our presider today is Father Mike Guarino. Please join us in our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. this afternoon for Tom Verilek and Sophie and Al Rensky. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Great. 
God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which your Lord, your God, did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Upon those who hope for his kindness 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Vince Lombardi was famous for beginning every Green Bay Packer season by holding up a football and saying, gentlemen, this is a football. The point was to get back to the basics of the game and to provide a good, solid foundation for everything else that would come. I think today, through this feast and our reading, this is Jesus's, this is a football moment. We're celebrating today the most basic of all feasts and perhaps the most difficult to understand, the feast of the Trinity. Have you ever been asked to explain the Trinity to anyone? three persons in one being, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I mean, this is something that our mind just can't comprehend. There's nothing in our experience to compare it to. So what do we know about the Trinity? It's a mystery. 
Well, we all love a good mystery, long as uh, we can come to the conclusion, long, long as it can be solved. You know, we love a mystery, we see the clues, and then bada bing, it's all solved. If you remember Perry Mason, uh, after the, at the end of all of his shows, he would sit down with Della and Paul and explain to them all of the clues that gave him a reason to pick this person as the murderer. Well, the mystery of Trinity is understood only in faith. For all Christians, the Trinity is the basis, is what their faith rests on. We know that our faith tells us that the Trinity is something that we can relate to, not understand, but relate to. The Catechism of the Church says that the mystery of the Trinity is the central mystery for Christian faith and life. We have all been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Becoming a child of God, God eagerly wishes to reveal himself to us if we will allow him. In fact, all of the history of salvation, all of it, is a revelation of Jesus or of God. It's a revelation of God to those he loved, to his creatures. And he does it through his actions. You know, the actions that he performed throughout the history of the Israelites and through the teachings of his son. We shouldn't be surprised that God, the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, wants to show himself to us through his actions. And why we shouldn't be surprised is because it's through actions that we come to know anyone. We know someone and we reveal ourselves through our actions. The better we know someone, the more we can understand their actions. So, you know, it's an awful thing for a priest to have Trinity Sunday because it's not easy to try to explain this mystery. And I'm not even going to try, but you can say, okay, it's a mystery. Is there anything else you can say? Well, I think this story might say something, too. Once there was a very elderly man, and he went out on his very normal daily walk, and he was enjoying the, uh, the stiff breeze and the, and the fresh air, and he heard a voice, help me, help me. And he looked around and he could see no one, so he continued his walk. Didn't get very far when he heard again a small voice, help me, help me. And he looked down and he saw a little frog. So he lifted gently the frog up and looked at him intently. And the frog said, I'm really a beautiful young princess. And if you give me a kiss, I will hug you and kiss you and love you for the rest of your life. Well, the man thought for a moment, and then he put him in his top pocket, and he kept walking. And the frog kind of tried to get out of the pocket, and he said, aren't you going to kiss me? And the man said, at this stage in life, I'd rather have a talking frog. To me, I think it says a little bit about relationship. The man was at the point that 
Uh, you know, I don't think he felt he's going to be able to relate very well to a beautiful princess. And if she became a beautiful princess again, she wasn't going to stay with him very long. So I'll relate to this frog. As I say, that's how we know one another in relationship with one another. That's what we can understand most about the Trinity, is relationship. We know that the Trinity is a relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm not going to go on much longer because the Trinity's always confused me too. But what I am going to say, and what I believe dearly and deeply, if you want to experience the Trinity, if you want to know as best that you can what Trinity is about, that I encourage you to make straight and make right all of your relationships. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God of love is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Doing as he commanded us, we lift up our prayers to our Father with confident trust. That the church on earth may be drawn together to reflect the perfect unity of the Trinity, the community of divine love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who direct human society and frame our laws may submit to the commandments of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the men and women who serve this country that they may know the love and gratitude of our nation for their sacrifices to protect our freedoms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our departed brothers and sisters may be raised into glory of the Holy Trinity, especially Tom Gallahu, who passed away this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Tom Verilek and Sophie and Al Ransky, whom we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we offer our prayers, 
draw us into the communion of the Spirit who dwells in your children and the Son, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this Eucharistic offering of our service and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to carry out each day 
as with one voice they acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the Eucharistic offerings of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned here before you. In your mercy, ga gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always safely offer each other a sign of God's peace. takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. I hope you haven't told you this, but there were a group of 30-year-old uh, single women, and they were trying to decide where they would go out to dinner. And after discussion, they decided to go to the Ocean View restaurant because uh, they thought the waiters were kind of hot. Well, 20 years later, uh, they're now 50-year-old women, and they're discussing again where will they go to dinner, and they decided on the uh, Ocean View restaurant because it has good food and a good wine list. Ten years later, they're now 60-year-old women, and they're discussing where will we go to dinner, and they decide on the Ocean View restaurant because it's very peaceful and uh, they would be very, very content there. And it has a great view of the ocean. Ten years later now, they're in their 70s, again, trying to decide where will we go to dinner, and they say the Ocean View Restaurant because it's handicap accessible and it has an elevator. Ten years later, they're in their 80s, and once again, they're deciding where will they go to dinner and they decided to go to the Ocean View restaurant because they'd never been there before. <laughs> These are our announcements for this week. There is no Zoom meeting about the building fund this particular Tuesday coming off of Memorial Day weekend, but there will be new news uh, on uh, June 8th if you can join us at 7 p.m. Flock note and bulletin will get you there. Um, if you're planning on attending Father Michael's celebratory mass and reception on June 19th, please call the office and make sure you get a ticket. Parish office is closed on Monday for Memorial Day, and please take your worship aids with you as you leave. Um, Father, Michael, Father Mike told me not to say this, but Betty told no, me to say this, no, and I think I got no. a better chance of forgiveness from the priest that we love here uh, on his 53rd anniversary of his ordination. Thank you. And our closing hymn is, O God Almighty Father. <laughs> 